Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm Francesca Perucci, uh, Assistant Director of the UN Statistics Division, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar today, building a community to strengthen statistical training. Uh, I would kindly ask you to keep your mic on mute so that we don't have echoes. Thank you. Uh, the Global Network of uh, Institutions for Statistical Training, what we call the GIST, was established in 2018 uh, to facilitate more coordination and help harmonize, improve the offer of statistical training options uh, to better respond to the new data demands of the 2030 Agenda. Uh, since its establishment, the GIST has actually evolved from a, a network for coordination of statistical training to a real community of experts uh, that have come together uh, to collaborate very closely on new initiatives and really uh, produce uh, concrete important outputs. And today we will hear about some of these important achievements from the key members of the GIST. They're all uh, the first presenters are all members of the board. Uh, and then uh, we'll reflect, uh, reflect with some members uh, of the stakeholders advisory group on, uh, on what more this group can and should offer and what their experiences as uh, as uh, also users and uh, both users and producers of, of these training uh, training offers. Uh, this event is part of uh, the series of events of the UN Statistical Commission uh, and provides an opportunity for some more in-depth discussion and, and for us to share more of the information on, on what this group has, uh, has achieved. Uh, since, of course, the formal session of the Commission is quite short and, and doesn't really allow us to to describe and discuss in depth uh, what the group has done. Uh, also this year, as you know, the UN Statistical Commission will be a virtual event. Uh, so uh, our participants, especially our colleagues today uh, that are here with us from uh, National Statistical Office, you know that, uh, that uh, there will be some constraints and it will be slightly different from what we're used to, to experience every year. But of course, uh, you're welcome to send uh, written statements with any suggestions or further reflections that uh, that you have following uh, today. So we have a, a great uh, list of, of presenters, as I said, some key members of, of the GIST, and we will also have a very interesting panel from the stakeholders uh, advisory group of, of the GIST. I'll, uh, I'll keep it short and stop here, and, and just allow me to introduce Helen McEvery, who's the outgoing chair of the GIST, uh, Helen has been with us since the beginning of this journey and has been a wonderful, wonderful chair. She has guided us through this. She has advised us. She has really kept the group together and also been uh, very, very instrumental in, in keeping the group going in, in those moments, especially when it wasn't clear in the beginning what directions we were taking. And, and so allow me to thank her really, really very much uh, on behalf of uh, the whole team at the UN Statistics, Statistics Division, and I'm sure on behalf of the whole uh, group, the, all members of the GIST. So, Ellen, I'll pass it over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Francesca. Very to your kind words. It has been an honour and a privilege. Welcome everybody. Good morning, good evening, good day. So it is an honour to speak to you today, even if I can't see you. So Rebecca is just getting the slides up. And I also add welcome to this webinar, Building a Community to Strengthen Statistical Training as part of the UNSC side events. Next slide, please. So the Global Network of Institutions for Statistical Training was born three years ago, except that there was a lot of discussion before that. Now, you can find quite a lot of information on the website, and I'll particularly draw your attention to the update on work that is part of the papers for this UNSC. Next slide, please. The structure that we put in place uh, three years ago, we have 25 member organisations provide training across countries. We set up task teams and we now have three task teams and those leaders will be speaking to you. We have a stakeholder advisory group 
representatives of national statistical offices, and that was increased in the last year to 12 countries. We consult with them. The board consists of the just chair, the task team leaders, and the UNSD secretariat. So, um, as chair, I have attended many meetings over the last couple of years. So here are some, yes, next slide, please. <laughs> here are some just achievements over the last year. And I also draw your attention to documents on the website that um, show the achievements in the last three years. There was a lot of learning to be done, and I'll say more about that. So the first bullet point, the reason it's in bold is because the increased exchange and collaboration has been extremely valuable. Now, the task team leaders will um, be speaking about the bullet points that follow, so I won't say much about them here, just to give you a taste of the treats that have come in this webinar. Next slide, please. Next slide. So, Francesca mentioned community of practice. And this slide I want to spend some time on talking to. A community of practice is a group of people, or in our case, organisations and people, who share a concern or a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. Communities of practice are particularly important in teaching and training, and especially in statistics. In tackling the original terms of reference, GIST developed naturally into a community of practice, and now there is a conscious growing of it. Harmonisation is a community, discovering, accumulating and sharing knowledge, materials, experience and expertise, learning with and from each other, and cooperating in improving capacity in official statistics worldwide. The call to identify needs and gaps is not simple. It's challenging because in-depth information is needed. So we combined information from surveys, inventories, interviews, that all helps, but the discussion across expertise, experience and stakeholders was and is essential. The work Matali will tell you about grew from such discussion. Lena will tell you about GIST's online gateway within UNSDG Learn, a great achievement in facilitating searching, accessing and finding out something of course offerings. But what about the call we hear of preventing duplication? There's a multitude of nuances in statistics courses, even in areas such as official statistics. A better aim is usually to seek and report in-depth knowledge of courses and sharing and adapting approaches. I call it apparent duplication because it is not always um, clear. Another frequently heard call is best practice. Now, identification and description of best practice also requires significant in-depth knowledge and expertise shared understanding, much discussion and ongoing review, and is best described by frameworks within relevant contexts. But this is something that GIST will aim for. So the GIST and the stakeholder advisory community continue to develop in many areas, e-learning, evaluation, assessment, curriculum design. Um, I just mentioned frameworks for uh, best practice with products and outcomes that include member initiatives, templates, guidance documents, ideas and inspiration. Next slide, please. Next slide. GIST is more important than ever, clearly for NSOs. GIST is partners, clients, collaborators, also for national statistical systems. Training is important for the people who work with statistics in there and for their working with NSOs. Government, business and industry depend 
on good quality statistics. Everybody. In 2018, the American Statistical Association, President Robert Rodriguez, described statistics as the most unselfish of sciences, and the statistics improves human welfare not by its own ends, but by its contributions in all fields. I want to say a word to finish with statistics and data science. However one describes them, they clearly, inextricably, interlinked. A significant challenge is ensuring this in education. Where statistics courses are consistent with long time advocacy of teaching to reflect the practice of statistics, including more data science is more readily achieved. But always the fight is against the type of denial of statistical thinking that can emerge in other disciplines. Now, there's an enormous work, amount of work going on in statistics and data science education. At the 2018 World Data Forum, data science CEOs commented that doing data science requires a team. I also advocate teamwork across the big tent of statistics in training and teaching. Next slide, please. Last slide. Next slide. Right. Here are some proposed foci for 2021, but I don't have time to go through them at the moment because my time is up. But um, the task team leaders will speak of them and there's many exciting things on the books. So I'd like to thank you for joining in this webinar. I hope you enjoy the rest of it. Last slide. And I want to say thanks to GIST and stakeholder advisory group members, to the task team leaders, to the UNSD Secretariat, and to everyone who contributes to GIST. Thank you. Thank you so much, Helen. That was a wonderful overview of the work done and, and our ideas on how to move forward and the work for, for this year. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, it's now my great pleasure to introduce another very important member of our group who's also been with us from the beginning and, and really forging this group and making it a, a great uh, platform for, for all of us to collaborate. And uh, Elena Prodan uh, from uh, UNITAR, she will talk to us about our efforts to create this common platform for courses and, and micro learning. So Elena, it's my pleasure to pass it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Francesca. And um, I will uh, start by saying that it's a great pleasure and honor for me to be presenting today on behalf of the GIST, the work that we've been doing. So let me just increase my screen. I hope all of you can see it well. Um, I would like to start by um, telling you the story behind uh, what uh, I will demo just now. Um, when uh, a few years ago, right after the establishment of the GIST, uh, one of the task, team, task teams was working on the mapping of all the training courses uh, provided by the GIST members. One of the questions that came up was about the uh, sort of sustainability of this initiative. So it was great to see this snapshot of courses for us um, at once. But then, of course, things evolve. Uh, courses that were there one day are not there anymore. And most importantly, we were thinking, how can we make sure that uh, the learners and also uh, national statistical offices and uh, their staff members and uh, members of national statistical systems can actually also easily uh, see all these courses and be able to choose what is most relevant for them uh, um, in their um, situation, uh, career, professional uh, objectives. And um, what we did uh, actually, uh, um, we started this work a year and a half ago, was that uh, we joined forces and we leveraged another initiative that my institute was launching at that time together with UN System Staff College. And that was uh, the creation of a gateway uh, to all learning on the SDGs. 
And we thought uh, with uh, the GIST numbers, why don't we create a special uh, statistics gateway uh, that would provide um, uh, a gateway to all um, training and learning initiatives, uh, courses um, and products um, that are relevant uh, for the official statistics community, but also other stakeholders. Uh, who are either using uh, data or somehow uh, contributing also uh, representatives of um, new data sources, etc. So um, what we did was that uh, we set up this uh, special landing page dedicated fully to statistics. Um, and it's being curated by uh, UN Statistics Division as the uh, secretariat for GIST, and it's really a GIST uh, gateway uh, to all learning uh, related to official statistics, and that is relevant also um, uh, for the SDGs. So, um, as you can see here, basically, there are several features that enable an easy search. Uh, you can either search directly by typing your keywords, or you can also um, search using taxonomies. And you can see here, uh, we've added a special uh, taxonomy for statistics based on the uh, classification of statistical activities uh, loosely. So you, you, you see five main domains, but I will also show you that there is also a disaggregated classification. And then you can also search, uh, for example, by goals and uh, some cross-cutting topics. Uh, then you can also uh, search by, uh, on the main page, you can see uh, the courses and search by the type of delivery mode, that is whether it's an e-learning course or face-to-face -face course. Um, and then finally, uh, once you start your search, uh, you can see um, these previews of the courses uh, that already provide some basic information about the course. And here you can refine your search uh, more, for example. Uh, you see that we focus on courses here, and we'll, I will talk a little bit more about microlearning uh, later. Uh, and uh, here we are focusing only on uh, statistics and data relevant courses. Uh, you can also search by the type of course. You see this uh, drop down uh, menu. And uh, you can also search using uh, a more detailed uh, statistical uh, taxonomy, basically, as you can see here through the drop down menu under statistics theme. Um, once you click on one of the courses that seem to be of relevance to you, you can see also more detailed information. And I, I will show you just three different courses, uh, how it looks like. Uh, for example, this is a course that is uh, provided by UNCR colleagues, uh, a basic level e-learning course with uh, the introduction into the system of national accounts and uh, integrated economic statistics. And you can see that uh, there is also a, um, a small window here that gives all the information. For example, you can see right away that the course is free. And you can also go straight to the course. So if you click on this button, you will see the course page and you can take the course from here. Uh, here is an example of another course uh, developed by Statistics Norway, for example, that focuses on the, that aims to strengthen skills related to the development and testing of a questionnaire. Uh, again, here you can see some key information, for example, that the learning time required for this course is estimated at about eight hours, and you can also visit the course page. Um, and you can see here that the courses are also uh, different, so there are different ways also and different methodologies that enable to learners to achieve the stated learning objectives. Uh, in this case, you see a series of um, interactive videos with lectures, but also with animations. And uh, finally, here is an example of another course that was developed uh, to raise statistical literacy of decision makers aimed 
policymakers, but also other stakeholders, uh, data users, uh, developed uh, jointly by UNITAR, UN Statistics Division, and uh, UN Economic uh, Commission for Africa. And also with the guidance, um, actually, of our uh, GIST chair, uh, Helen McGillery. So in this course, um, for example, some of the key information that you can also see is that some of the courses provide certification. So it's a structured learning where you register, you take tests and assessments, and by the end of the course, you can get a certificate. And if you go, for example, on the course page, you will see the structure of the course, and then you can go inside one of the lessons. For example, uh, here I picked uh, the module on communicating uh, effectively with data, and you can see that the module uh, contains um, different aspects related to storytelling with words, with tables, with graphs and maps. And um, it combines the introduction theory also with some interactive exercises, as you can see here. So um, this is what uh, had been developed. There is this gateway that enables learners to easily find um, the um, learning offers uh, that are out there, offered primarily started, of course, with the GIST numbers. As you can see right now, we have 59 courses. And um, we've been uh, having primarily GIST numbers, 25 organizations contributing to this uh, gateway, uh, at least many of them. Uh, however, we also have now um, other uh, course providers, including some national statistical offices uh, who start contributing also um, learning courses to this gateway. For example, uh, we'll have a colleague from the um, uh, Mexican NSO who will be also presenting at the panel uh, today. They are planning to contribute six courses. Um, also, we have some of the GIST, other GIST members, uh, for example, ILO, International Labor Organization, who are in the process of doing so. So this gateway is growing, and of course, um, it will be uh, the better, the more uh, courses we can capture by different global and regional providers of courses, uh, the better it will be for the learners to be able to find what really fits their needs. And um, the last point that uh, I wanted to mention is that uh, something new that we are developing right now, and um, it will be ready very soon, is that we are adding also micro learning. So what we realized, first of course, um, in general, uh, the importance of the access to e-learning. This gateway is particularly important to give a picture about the existing e-learning uh, opportunities. Uh, that is a very cost-efficient way also um, to train globally uh, the national statistical, uh, the, the um, official statistical community um, at the national level. Uh, but we also realized that against the uh, backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a significant increase in the interest related to e-learning. And in addition to that, there is also a growing interest in small bits of learning. Suppose I don't have a lot of time to take uh, a full course, but I'm interested in un improving my understanding about a certain concept. So I can go and watch, for example, a three minute video. And that would be an example of micro learning. I can go and take a quiz. So micro learning, it's uh, a way of uh, providing bits of knowledge uh, in a focused way to your learners. And quite often, also, the idea for it is to be engaging and interactive. And uh, here you see that on the um, generic UNSDG Learn Gateway, there are already quite a few videos, micro learning videos, that are actually relevant for official statistics. But we will have this special rubric on the statistics page, where it will be also possible to search for micro learning separately. And there is a number of videos also on which we are uh, working jointly uh, um, with the GIST members uh, that address, among others, for example, uh, trust in official statistics. And we hope that it will be also a useful tool for national statistical offices 
uh, to use when they communicate with their uh, with data users, for example. So you can see uh, it will appear like that uh, with the statistics uh, marker. And uh, I will stop here. And um, yeah, if there are any questions, I think any of us who are involved in this work will be able to answer them. Thank you so much, Elena, and, and uh, I encourage everybody to visit this uh, page and, uh, of course, we're happy to hear from, uh, from you if you have suggestions, uh, as Elena said, you know, the more learning we can include there, the better for the users to have a, a common platform uh, to have access, easy access. And I'll uh, now pass it over to you, Rebecca. She, she will moderate from, uh, from here on for the next session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francesca, and thanks to, to all the speakers so far. You were, uh, we want to break it up a little bit uh, with a uh, uh, polling question. Uh, so I'm sharing now on the screen my, uh, uh, the polling question, and uh, our colleague uh, at uh, UNSD will also be putting it there on the screen, so you can actually see it twice now. Um, the question is, have you had plans to take e-learning courses in official statistics in the last year? And uh, you have uh, three minutes uh, to respond to this. I'll also read out the categories. Yes, I have successfully completed at least one e-learning course. B, yes, I have started one or more courses last year, but could not complete. C, no, I would have loved to, but could not find the time to take any e-learning courses. D. No, my internet connection has not allowed me to. E, no, this has not been a priority of mine. And F, no, I have not thought of this as a possibility. So you can uh, choose the option here and then you submit and we'll look at the result uh, in a little bit. So I'll also stop showing, sharing the PowerPoint as we can see it from the following directly. So I think we will uh, close it a little early. I'll give you a few more seconds to, to fill in your response and then we'll see the response in, uh, in a few seconds. So 10 seconds from now, we'll stop the polling. Just wait if you can stop the polling, I think. Uh... So can we see the result uh, just wait? Will you uh, share it with us? Oh yeah, now I can see the results. So we have uh, quite a few who haven't responded, but it seems like the majority actually of those who responded have uh, successfully completed an e-learning course. Uh, over 30 people or 30 people out of the 131 here in the meeting have successfully completed. Uh, but then there are also quite a few who have not had the time. Um, and we also see uh, that some did not have the time to complete. Uh, and there are also a few that haven't thought of it as a possibility. But the good thing is I can't see anyone who's had internet connection issues. That being said, maybe they are not here because they have internet connection issues in general. But I think this is quite interesting. Um, thanks so much for, for this. Um, with this, I'll uh, hand over to um, a colleague from UNCF, Mr. Sokol Vako.
we will be uh, sharing some uh, information about the ongoing work that we uh, have been doing in one of the task teams about evaluation of courses. Just need to just give me a second. Thank you very much, uh, Vibeke, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, colleagues. Uh, one of the uh, work streams that uh, the task team uh, that, that we are part of uh, focused on the evaluation of courses in official uh, statistics. So if we can move to the next slide, please, Vibeke. So the task team very much recognized that while uh, evaluations are something that many statistical institutions, if not all statistical institutions do, the practice is very considerably. Uh, so there was an opportunity for, for us as GIST to uh, get together and uh, uh, sift through some of the best practices that are uh, out there and see if we can put together some uh, general guidance on this particular topic. Uh, in particular, we thought that uh, members of the task team in particular thought that uh, this particular tool was very much an, an important tool, but an underutilized one. Uh, so there was an opportunity to uh, bring evaluations uh, into the mainstream, so to say, of uh, capacity building activities and trainees, training uh, in official uh, statistics. An opportunity to, as Helen highlighted in her remarks at the beginning, to learn from one another and, and build our community uh, in this area as well. Uh, so uh, the idea was very much how do we go about uh, utilizing uh, the evaluations uh, as a tool for change, and not only in the content that we deliver, but more broadly how the evaluations can be used uh, to uh, uh, raise awareness, to get resources, and and to be leveraged to answer a number of other questions that uh, that can be uh, important to the various uh, user groups. So this is where we started, and then. Uh, the task team uh, uh, worked very closely. We had a few more than a few meetings together. Uh, members contributed by providing their inputs and what do they do in the current uh, uh, environment as far as evaluations, templates, and so on and so forth. So we had a good collaborative effort and we have a, a short document that's already been circulated. Uh, that's a work in progress, but uh, it, it, it's a good, uh, good starting point. So next slide, please. So what did we consider as far as uh, the initial thinking around this particular topic? We focused on what turned out to be uh, a number of very uh, relevant but interlinked questions. Uh, the first thing that we had to determine is sort of narrowing our, our, our scope for the initial discussions that we were having. Uh, trainings, as you probably know, can occur at multiple levels. We can do, uh, I'm sorry, evaluations rather can occur at multiple levels. They can be done for training courses. They can be done for training programs. You can evaluate an entire training institute. And some of the colleagues that are that are here with us have gone through all these different processes. The other thing to keep in mind is that online courses, in-person courses, or or blended courses, all will have different uh, uh, evaluation needs. And to add another layer of complexion to all of this, uh, trainings nowadays include a number of activities. Uh, that you know are are different than might have been the case a few years back. Didactic methodology has advanced quite a lot, and uh, hands-on work, teamwork, presentations, lectures. Uh, there are a number of activities that go on in the trainings that uh, evaluation needs to reflect. The other component that we uh, uh, talked about was when are we evaluating? And many of us are familiar with evaluation at the end of a of a training, but again, uh, this is a much broader topic and the evaluation can occur at multiple uh, phases. It could occur during the development of the training. So sort of a peer review uh, where specialists in the particular topic uh, provide inputs. Uh, it can occur during the training itself. So it doesn't have to be necessarily at the end. Uh, facilitators can take the time to, to get a pulse of how the training is going by conducting an evaluation in the middle of it. Uh, and then uh, there is also the uh, uh, after the training, right? So sometimes the evaluation might be more uh, suitable to be conducted well after the training is done. 
uh, in order to ensure that there has been time for the implementation of what has been learned. And that leads me to the next two questions, which actually are quite the most important one as, as far as uh, as far as this topic is concerned, which is what information needs to be collected and who needs that information. And I think it's quite important that the audiences uh, for for the evaluation is identified. Uh, we often think of uh, the information in the training, uh, in the evaluation rather, as being just needed by the, the training developer and, and the ones that are facilitating it. But we are missing a big chunk of, of potential users, in particular managers, high level executives, managers of trainees. So it's quite important then when, when we think about designing a evaluation, we think about what information needs to be collected. So, you know, the usual information we're used to about demographics, the quality of the materials, the usability of the trainings, what are future needs. Uh, there are, these are all questions that need to be uh, uh, well developed and well thought out before the evaluation obviously is put in place. And then again, we need to uh, work very much closely with the various user groups for that information to ensure that the evaluation uh, captures uh, all the various uh, uh, potential uses uh, of it. Uh, and then the last two points here quickly, uh, who has the information and how are we collecting the information that we need? Uh, it's not necessary that the trainee or the person that participates in the training will have uh, the information that is needed to be collected. Sometimes the manager of the trainee and sometimes sometimes another group will have the relevant information. So at the end of the day, the uh, structure of the uh, evaluation needs to be driven by the information needs that need to be collected and who needs that, that particular uh, information. Uh, let me also quickly touch on how we do this. Uh, often, again, everybody is familiar with the surveys, but uh, uh, we have other uh, approaches that can be used in this. Uh, there is focus groups, there are interviews, there are tests, which we'll talk about it in a, in a little bit here as well, group projects. So it is not limited to surveys and it is not limited to right after the training is completed, but there are other tools and methods that can be used in order to evaluate a particular training, depending again by the two overriding questions of what information needs to be collected and who has that information. We need to be mindful of the resource requirements for this, not only on, our, on the training uh, side, on the developer side, but also on the trainee, the people that have the information, how long it takes, whether they are willing to provide this information and so on and so forth. Some of these are discussed in the, the very short paper that we've put together on this. So I'll not dwell too much so that we also save a little bit of time. We uh, we can move on rather quickly on this. Let's move on to the next slide, please, Rebecca. Uh, a good way to think about training is, uh, uh, and to sort of synthesize all of this is the Kirkpatrick model. This comes from industry. Uh, uh, it was developed for uh, determining how efficient trainings were in the private sector, but the very same framework can be used for thinking about statistical training as well. Again, uh, I will not touch, uh, spend too, too much time on this, but uh, we usually currently do very much uh, what are called level one reaction type of uh, evaluations where we collect information on how the trainer uh, how the uh, participant actually reacted to the training. This is the most common and we collect basic information here. Uh, the second level is about learning. So what information has been learned by the participant and usually tests are conduct conducted in order to measure learning, but also presentations, group work, uh, reports and so on and so forth. Uh, many statistical institutions out there from the, the task team uh, members and, and more broadly do some form of level two evaluation as well. Uh, the level three and four are quite a little bit more difficult to do. And again, uh, I'll, I'll leave it uh, to, to the paper for you to have a quick, quick look at this. Uh, we very much have some statistical uh, training institutes who are doing this, but uh, it's, it's behavior and results. So how does the knowledge uh, uh, get transferred into the job? How is it implemented? And then obviously the results is what outputs are be being produced as a result of the training. Uh, next slide. Very quickly here, um, 
where do we go from here? Uh, uh, to save a little bit of time, we will continue to update and 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 wrap things up with with a short paper that that we have put together, which very much focuses on just evaluations of, of trainings. We very much would like to encourage you if you have any templates that you would like to share with us, please send them our way and we will try to incorporate as best we can uh, some of the best practices out there for doing in particular level uh, level three uh, type of evaluations. Uh, let me stop there and thank you very much. I know that it was quite a sprint, uh, but uh, the paper is quite short and I would uh, very much encourage you to have a quick uh, read of it if you're interested in this topic. Rebecca, back to you. Thanks so much, Sokol, and uh, for taking us through this. I think it's a really interesting um, work that is, is ongoing here. With this, I'll hand over to our last speaker before we move on to the panel, which is uh, Mitali Sen from U.S. Census Bureau, who is also our new chair of GIST. So over to you, uh, Mitali, and I'll be sharing your slides as well. Everybody, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. yes, we can. Um, I missed more than half the show, I think, today, because uh, for some reason, our US Census Bureau laptops didn't have audio working on it. So now I'm working on my personal laptop. Um, I did notice everybody's presentation is very colorful compared to mine. So now welcome to some black and white presentation today. <laughs> um, So right now I'm not seeing it as yet in slide mode. Yeah. No, there's a lag. Okay. Um, so I'm going to actually talk about um, the task team that was um, uh, entitled addressing NSO needs. Um, and as part of that task team, we actually produced uh, two reports, and I'm going to share the results of the report. So we're going to talk about improving coordination of statistical training. Um, so the two subject matters we decided to focus on, uh, our conversations basically led us there, is number one, um, let's discuss staff training in NSOs, and how do we make the staff training sustainable? Because often what we find is we go and train uh, people, then go back after a few years in our own experience, and we found that the training uh, or the learning has atrophied over time, um, or there's been a turnover, so the training was not sustainably maintained in the institution. Um, the second uh, matter that we decided to address was um, in light of the big demand for SDGs, one of the things that was very noticeable is that in countries, countries were struggling to coordinate the delivery of SDGs. And part of that was also resulting from, you know, the national statistical system not being coordinated well. So we decided also that we should focus on NSS coordination and how training can actually uh, be one of the ways where the NSS can be better coordinated and synergies maximized within the data ecosystem of the country. Um, in addition, we wanted to see how international being GIST, we wanted to see how international and regional training organizations can contribute both to the NSO and NSS statistical training programs. So UNSD was very kind and they put forward some resources and we hired consultants who were very good. And we have two reports. Next slide, please. So the first report is on sustainable training programs and it was done by Doug and Elisa. Um, and I will, I will only touch, give you an overview because there are lots of details, they did a lot of work. Um, so their uh, report examines staff statistical training programs in several country NSOs um, and how they are supported also by the regional training institutions. In order to do this report, they actually interviewed 15 countries, right from, you know, Central America, South America, moving on to Europe, to Africa, 
uh, West Asia, Asia. Um, so they covered 15 countries, seven regional institutions, and they found there was much variation uh, in various aspects. So these training programs for staff, had, whether it was how much of a priority is training. Some countries, uh, NSOs, really made staff training a big priority. Others were very ad hoc. Um, there was variation in assessment of training needs. Some had very systematic ways of assessing which staff need training, what training needs to be done. Others didn't have any assessment. So therefore, there, was, uh, there were countries that were very systematic about it. There were others that were um, ad hoc as and when training opportunities presented themselves. People were either sent to training or they were um, uh, they benefited from it. Um, even the scope of training, uh, training, some curriculum, for example, had training in soft skills like management or like communication. Others were basically very technically focused on cartography, on sampling, et cetera. Um, some countries, most countries had a lot of offline training, that is in-person training, and some countries combined it with online training or blended training. Um, there was a lot of variation in resources. Some countries had facilities. They had training um, buildings for training. Um, they had uh, staff that were dedicated to training in the program. Other countries just made do with people who were already managers or senior staff members. Um, budgets were varied. Um, so basically, uh, there was a lot of variation between 15 countries, some were very advanced. They had thought, thought through their training. They had proper facilities. Uh, they had in-house internal uh, instructors. Others depended on independent training institutes. So the training was done outside the NSO itself. Um, and then there were also that depended on regional training organizations um, to train the NSOs. Next slide, please. So the key to sustainable training was finding some strong support and commitment to funding for training, especially by the NSA, NSO or by some senior government um, body that would support and fund training. In order for training to be sustainable, this is really key. Um, another thing is a lot of places were missing any incentive structure for training. So if there is like recognition or a bonus for pay uh, for the trainers to take on training um, or promotions because you do better training, th this is important to keep training uh, sustainable and um, people motivated to train and to take training. Um, thirdly, the um, consultants found that, you know, most training programs didn't have a robust evaluation of the impact. It's really important to know whether this training is going to improve the performance of the NSO. And so uh, one of the keys to a good training program is to actually evaluate as Sokol just went through that, you know, there is a real lack of evaluation of training and the impact of that training over the long term in an institution. In order to um, in order to make the most of your resources, uh, we did find that one of the recommendations that the consultant said is you could use trained staff members to become the trainers in your institute. And such people should be supported with ad additional subject matter training as well as pedagogical support. During the pandemic, many places were exploiting online training many of the NSOs and the training centers. And so this is a good idea and just could contribute to this too. Um, and some of the countries said that some of the challenges that they really need support on was this data revolution that's going on. Increasingly, everything is getting digitalized and they don't feel prepared to take on that world. So they would benefit from support in that area. Next slide, please. 
So from, from the study, some of the recommendations that they've made is maybe all countries can benefit from some kind of a minimum standard curriculum for official statistics. They can benefit from a repository of training materials and truth tools that are available instead of duplicating in every country. And for this, GIST can really contribute to this and is contributing in terms of SDG Learn uh, platform uh, and micro learning. Also, there may be a need for countries to have some guidance on how to start a training program for those countries that don't have a training program. And what are the elements of a very sustainable training program? Um, and it is important that we need to strengthen and clarify the role of international and regional organizations in providing training. So that was another recommendation. Now I'm running out of time, so I'll quickly move on to the second uh, next slide, please. So the next uh, study was on the report of NSS coordination. And the NSS coordination was uh, basically to address how can this coordination in the national statistical system, how can it be strengthened through training? So this was done by Lars and he gathered information by interviewing official statistical agency in two countries, as well as other official statistical statistics producers um, in two countries, sorry, the first one in eight, and then official statistic producers in two countries. Uh, to get a sense of the statistical system. Again, there was much variation with some countries having no legislation that deals with how this NSS should coordinate, though most countries did have some legislation. Um, countries varied by how decentralized they were versus centralized in the production of official, official statistics. And then countries also differed with you know, different levels of geography, whether you have statistics institutions in your know, regions versus the center. So there's a regional spread um, among the, within the NSS system. However, in all countries interviewed, you know, NSOs the, produce well over 50% of official statistics. So that was the, always the case. Like the NSO was the major producer of official statistics. Um, training on the NSS, uh, was quite non-existent. That is training that is de devoted to how to coordinate, what, what are the advantages of um, coordinating the national statistical system. Um, most countries didn't have good training on that. Okay, next slide, please. So the recommendations from this report were all countries should establish legislation dealing with how the national statistical system should be coordinated, both in terms of organization structure, as well as once that structure is in place, how should data be shared? What, uh, for example, should the sampling frame be shared? Um, what, what kind of metadata, what kind of definitions the institutes use? What kind of administrative resources can be used to link? These are all really important national statistical uh, system coordination themes that need to be dealt with. Um, and so more courses should be designed that deal with this kind of coordination. Courses on statistics laws, courses on the importance of coordination and the structure, courses on quality management, dissemination practices of the entire NSS system. Instead of uh, external users having to go to disparate different agencies, having a centralized dashboard perhaps for dissemination. And um, international organizations could help by developing standards for these course content on issues of NSS coordination. Um, Another way of actually coordinating is having more joint training. And there were some countries that did this, joint training across various statistics offices inside the country. Um, one of the ideas was to come up with a certification system for official statistics that could be established where you could say that a train, somebody who participated in this course is now certified to be a professional to produce these kind of, say, population projections or environmental statistics. 
um, they have a certain level of qualification. And then finally, mentoring top managers in NSS coordination is really very important, that is senior managers in how, how to deal with and how to coordinate and how to cooperate so that the synergies of the NSS system can be maximized. Um, do I have another slide next? No, so thanks very much uh, to learn about the further details. There, there are reports and I think we're going to upload it in the UNG site when we're ready. Thank you. Thanks so much to Matali and uh, over to you, Francesca, for the panel. Thank you so much, Vibeke. So the last part of the webinar today uh, will be a panel discussion and we have uh, members of the stakeholder advisory group. We have four members with us uh, with today. We have uh, Abrash Tariku from the Central Statistical Agency of Ethiopia. We have Samir Isara from the High Commission for Planning, Morocco. Eric Rodriguez from Hineki, uh, the National Statistical um, Institute uh, and Geography of Mexico. And uh, last but not least, Josefina uh, Josi Almeida from the Philippine Statistical uh, Research and Training Institute. So welcome. Pleasure to have you here today. Uh, you are our advisory group members. Uh, so I have a few questions for you. We are running a little bit behind, so we have to be very strict with time. Uh, and uh, I'd ask you to please take about a minute, uh, maximum two minutes to, to answer. So the first question uh, I'd like to ask you is, I know your office, your institution is, uh, provides training to staff in statistics. If you could say a few words on how your training programs are organized and what you see as working efficiently, working well, if you can point to an achievement, a recent achievement, and where you see the challenges. So I'd like to start with Abrash. Over to you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, uh, normally, Central Saskal Agency of Ethiopia provide uh, training uh, and we provide in two ways. First, a pre-planned training and also training upon request. And a pre-planned training is an uh, uh, annual plan is provided for line ministries and also for regions on data quality standards and related issues. And training upon request are provided on questionnaire design methodology, software and electronic data collection and uh, transfer. And some of the achievements we, pro we managed to provide training for regions, uh, especially on to improve administrative data qualities for regions and districts. And we hope that that has improved the administrative data collection somehow. We also provided some uh, trainings on software, uh, data, uh, data capturing and transfer in collaboration with professional associations. And the major challenges is um, uh, to do uh, training assessment, need assessment, and also updating the training need assessment permanently, one challenge, and designing sustainable training, and also preparing standard curriculum is another challenge, and mobilizing trainers is also a challenge, and also designing regulation to support the training, and uh, preparing up-to-date standard training materials, and monitoring the impact of the training, and funding and also incentive structures are the challenges. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very good and concise answer, uh, Abraj. Uh, uh, I'd like now to pass it over to Samir. Samir, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, so, about how we conduct training in High Commission for Planning in Morocco. So, we conduct annual training plan based on common needs and also some particular needs for specific service at the national and regional level. For that, we use a different approach. We provide in-house training with internal instructors. We have our experts in ACP and also we rely on teachers from our school on statistical engineer. The second way, we collaborate with many international organizations and several managers and engineers uh, take part in various training courses, seminars, workshops, and conferences. 
The third way is we uh, have uh, some contract with other schools and training institutes in Morocco, and of course with other uh, statistical provider, and sometimes with the private training firm. And the last one is the online courses, which uh, start to become more and more used during the last three years in, uh, in ICP. Uh, we encourage employees to take open online courses in various fields, and we paid for them the certificates when they finish the, the, the course. And now we start to develop the early learning platform. So if I talk about the, the achievements, I think for us, the internet training is very effective because it's practical and we receive very good uh, feedback from employees that they improve their skills and competencies. And also the online courses is very uh, relevant. Uh, so we, we are starting to, to get good results. About challenges, I can say the, the, the first one is how to, uh, to improve the employee skills and competencies to move from in-place working more to digital one for both technical aspects such as carrying out of uh, online survey and also for in uh, cooperation, virtual co co collaboration. The second challenge is to, to find the high, highly qualified experts who master the technical subjects, but have also practical experience and pedagogic skills. And of course, according to available training budgets or to international cooperation. And the last challenge is to develop more and more the online training uh, in different fields. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, you so much. Uh, Eric, over to you. Thank you. The National Institute of Statistics and Geography of Mexico coordinates the National Statistical and Geography Information System. As part of the coordination function, INEGI prepares a permanent and update program of training and improving of technical capabilities of the statistical and geography use, issues for all the government bureaus at the part of the system. INEGI develops training courses on topics such as regulation of the national statistical system, generic statistical business process model, data documentation initiative metadata, and other tools, for example, for administrative records, to name someone. In addition, INEGI coordinates seminars on current issues in statistical and geography, such as new data, and methods for generating official information, small ORIS estimation models, responsive and adaptive survey design, and data editing, imputation, and non response. In the new normality by COVID 19, INEG is working in the migration of training courses to synchronous, synchronous and asynchronous online scans. The e learning material developed by INEG will be available in the UNS. SDGLearn.org. In the other hand, the main challenge is the mobility of the workers in the statistical and geographical areas of the federal, state, and municipal governments. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, uh, the mobility is uh, certainly an issue that is common to many countries. Um, and now, last but not least, uh, Josefina, our uh, colleague from the, the Training Institute in the Philippines. Over to you, Joseph. Okay, thank you, Francesca. So actually, um, before the pandemic, we used to do all our trainings face-to-face. -face. But during the pandemic, we have no choice but to go into virtual trainings and in particular, synchronous learning. And our platform is Zoom. And we tried to make our trainings like face-to-face -face by allowing the participants to actively participate. And we made use of the different Zoom features like the breakout rooms, the reactions, the chat box, and also um, all our pre-tests and post-tests were done online. We provide the participants with PDF copies. And then we have several activities during the training. We do lectures, recaps, exercises, workshops, energizers, okay, and the last day is usually presentation and critiquing, okay, and we also do online evaluation and certificates are being given through email. Now, as for our achievements, um, last 
year, 2020, even though we have the pandemic, we were able to conduct 44 trainings. And this is from the most basic statistics to the more advanced statistical tools like regression analysis. We even did um, gender statistics for decision making. And um, as to the total number of participants, um, we had 2,222 participants. And our trainings are one day up to five days training. And as for the challenges for the virtual statistical training, um, some of the problems is intermittent internet connections, and there is less interaction between the participants. And sometimes, okay, since the video is not turned on, then you cannot see the reactions of participants, whether they are listening <laughs> or they are still there. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yes, the, the remote learning is, is useful, but on, you, you miss that, uh, that interaction and the body language to really uh, understand uh, the, the reactions. Now, we heard about what the GIST has, has been trying to do for, for, for all the institutions that offer training. So I'd like to hear from the panelists, uh, how do you see the role of the GIST? Has, has it been helpful to your work? What, what would be your recommendations in terms of what we can do better to, to serve the, the broader community that needs, that needs statistical training? Uh, why don't I start from, uh, from the beginning with you, Abarash? Over to you. Uh, okay, thank you again. Uh, so, uh, the GIST uh, contribution has been uh, significant to uh, countries like Ethiopia, uh, to NSOs and to NSS. Uh, basically, uh, the UNSDG LER, uh, where, how, where uh, we can find different uh, courses uh, that is very much um, supportive to, uh, to us and also to share our different countries' experience from, um, uh, uh, from the GIST. Uh, so that's very much uh, uh, supportive to countries. Thank you. And, and Samir, what's been your experience and what would be your recommendations? Uh, I think you're muted, perhaps, Samir. We can't hear you. Excuse me? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I think that. Uh, I recommend that uh, we have to move gradually to the implementation of the e-learning. We starting with blended learning cycle with uh, an online parts, but also face-to-face -face training. And uh, the second recommendation, I think that we have to work deeply on the online courses materials and offer the well-target courses that meet uh, the specific needs of the employee. In, in this regard, this can manage some special uh, training or guidance for experts and trainers to help them to create new online materials. And of course, we, to have a very strong online training platform that centralizes all available training courses with individual training paths that exactly meet the employee needs. And uh, of course, uh, to converge with the strategic orientation of the, the organization. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. Uh, Eric. Thank you. I, I think that it's very uh, useful for the National Institute to have uh, support materials like videos, infographics, or podcasts that we can reuse in different courses with our system. The, I think that in the COVID-19 uh, new normality, Asynchronic or synchronic courses need this kind of materials that help to understand the concepts or to reuse these uh, materials in the different levels of the government, like municipality, state, and federal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, Josefina, Josie. Um, it is very important that learning materials are being shared by everyone, especially that you don't need to develop training modules that are already existent, 
especially if it is done by very good professionals. And um, this will be greatly appreciated by many countries because we can standardize the learning of the different um, personnel, especially in the government. And I believe that um, with the help of GIST, okay, um, countries with different learning materials, especially in statistics, can be shared and further developed. And the nice thing about that is that you can look at other perspectives on how some topics are being delivered and presented. And thus, um, countries can also have changes or improvements in the way they provide their trainings to the Philipp uh, to the Philipp people, okay, in particular. So thank you very much. Thank you, that's very important. Well, unfortunately, we are really, really out of time. We're already behind schedule. Uh, but uh, just uh, to thank you very, very much for your for your insights and for your for your views. Uh, this conversation, of course, will have to continue and we rely on, on feedback from the participants today from our stakeholder uh, groups, advisory group. Uh, also, I'd like to tell you that uh, the the uh, Webinar today is recorded and will be available on the GIST and so will be the presentations. So we'll continue on the GIST webpage. Uh, so we'll continue the conversation and, and we really hope to hear from you and have feedback from all of you. Uh, our job is not done. Uh, so and you'll, uh, you'll see the, the, the focus of the work for next year is in the background document to the Statistical Commission. Uh, so, uh, we still have a few minutes left, uh, but I'd like to uh, leave those minutes to our uh, director, Stefan Schweinfest, who's been with us today, and uh, for him to say a few words and some uh, uh, concluding remarks. Uh, uh, Stefan, over to you. Thank you. Yes, hello, uh, everybody. Thank you, Francesca. And wow, this has been really fun. You certainly woke me up early in the morning. I mean, this was an interactive session and uh, it, I even learned something. I had never heard the term micro learning. So I realized that there's even hope for me as an old director where I thought I'm too old and, and too out of time to learn anything. But with micro learning, there is perhaps still a chance even for me. So uh, no, thank you very much, everybody, for putting this event together. Thank you to all the speakers, the panelists, the the just the board, the advisory group. I think this was to my team also to put this event uh, together because I mean this is really uh, critically important. Uh, I'm thinking back that a couple of years ago in a, in a in a small conference room we planted the seed and we of this gist. And we had a long discussion at the time, even on the acronyms, and we 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 dropped the N, as some of you may have noticed, to, to create a nicer acronym. Because I mean, training is really the gist of all the matter, and I think it's also an area where the United Nations can really do good, because our job is always to connect the dots. And and it was an area where I had realized that a lot, or we had all realized in the UN, that a lot was going on in different parts of the world. Uh, in different languages and and really truly dedicated people were working on this and but they were not connected and this was an opportunity for us I mean to connect this and to create this community so that you cannot only exchange experience that was perhaps the first ambition but I mean now I'm, I'm really really pleased to see how this community has come together and is working on solutions together I mean is designing uh, 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 syllabus and re platforms, uh, making sure that all, all the value, <clears throat> excuse me, all the valuable work that is done it reaches actually also the customers, and so this is very, very important. And uh, and creating, uh, for instance, the platform. And let me also thank Unitar as our strategic partner because I mean this platform is very valuable. It's not only to get uh, um, give the uh, users access to the to the materials, it can also become for us as managers at the higher level a tool for quality assurance, uh, making sure. Uh, for instance, I mean, the training should be, of course, in in compliance and coherence with UN standards, 
and should be following, for instance, international manuals so that we, we continue to create a joint language of statisticians across uh, the world. I'm also very, very pleased that you are looking now at the entire life cycle of training, which I would say is from the design of a training to implementation of training um, to the evaluation of training. And that, of course, has to feed back again into the design of the next round of training. Uh, when I was listening to you today, also, I, it, I realized that um, uh, we are all talking about COVID and crisis management. And in, in many areas, we're talking about what is going to be the new normal. But in the area of training, I think that is more true than in any other area. We will not go back to the way we functioned before. Um, this has even been an opportunity for us to develop the tools, the e-learning, the micro-learning, other things that you have mentioned. And I think that will make sure, even has made us move together as a community even more. And I that makes me optimistic for the future that uh, when we go back to a more normal functioning of the world, we will have more tools and organize this important part of our work even more effectively. I was just thinking really, I, I, I wanted to be a teacher, so I've always had a, ha a heart for capacity building and training. And um, so, but it is also from a cold blooded uh, efficiency point of work, uh, view, the most important uh, part of our work. Um, our most important asset in a statistical office, whether it is my office or your office, are the human resources. We spent most of our money on human resources. And um, uh, providing them with the tools to do the work well, to be motivated and, and to move all of our work into the next, uh, into the future, to the next stage. This is really critically important. So I'm very grateful to all of you who helped to put this event together. Thank you very much. Thank you also to the 130 or more people who kept uh, connected throughout the entire event. I saw many, many names of people that are truly dedicated to the topic of training and global cooperation. So thank you for your quiet support in the background. And let me just say at the end, this is an ongoing effort and I can only invite everybody to be part of it. Uh, we have heard the word community many, many times and at the United Nations, all of our communities are always open. So those of you who are part of it, please stay part of it. We need you. And those of you who, where we whet the appetite today and who are dedicated and working somewhere in the background at the national, regional or global level, become part of it and help us to make this even better in the future. So thank you to all again. And uh, thank you also to my team for organizing this as part of uh, an event uh, related to the Statistical Commission. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, all the panelists. Thanks. Thank you so much. See you, everyone. Hello, speaker. Rebecca, everybody. Bye. Greetings around the world. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Just, great, great, just great, for great. continue to progress. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. everybody. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Francesca. <laughs> Thank, thank you, you thank you thank you yeah, everyone thank you Alan. thank you everybody around the world yes to see all, all of you. you take care take good care of yourself most important yes good night yeah. yes good night and good day great to see you Sarko. Thank you, Francesca. Bye.